thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm.
You're on uh, what we used to call Peckham time, which is usually half an hour after the service starts. No, no, 10.30, 10.30. Good morning. It's an all-together service today. You are so welcome. There's still people milling in the welcome area, which is great, but I'm going to encourage you to come. Come, take a seat. If it's your first week here, you are so welcome. It's lovely to see you. Um, if you don't know anyone, grab someone and say, hi, I'm new, I don't know what happened. So uh, I'm Katie, I'm the coordinator for children, youth and families here, as well as being a volunteer youth worker. Jeff is our minister, and he will be bringing the word a bit later, and he's going to come and do the notices, actually, so over to Jeff. Good morning, church. Seems a little bit quieter this morning, I guess, people enjoying the last weekend of the Easter break. Um, if you are visiting, we, we normally, in normal services, children will go out into what we call Sunday Hub, uh, but today we're all going to be together, so it'll be a little bit of a shorter service, um, but really, and my son's very happy about that, it seems. Just a few notices to let you guys know what's going on in the life of the church. This week is starting Alpha. So that's on 18th of April, this, this Thursday. If you don't know, Alpha is a, a course which lasts about 11 weeks, introducing the Christian faith to those who are new to it or those who have been a Christian for a long time who want to remind themselves of the, the foundation of, of our belief. So uh, that's starting this Thursday. It's open to all. There's a meal involved. Paul, I'm going to make you stand up like I do regularly. I won't. Paul. Thank you, Paul. All right. This is Paul. He's a lovely man from time to time. And uh, he is uh, running the, the Alpha course. So that's going to be happening here on a Thursday evening. If you'd like to come, please speak to, to Paul about that. On Saturday, the 20th, we are having a coffee morning here to raise money for the Indian orphanage in Surapet that we support. And so that's going to be running from 10.30 to 12. And there's also going to be a plant sale there. Now, for several years, we have a church, as a church, along with Earl's Hall Baptist Church and Hadley Baptist Church. I'm looking for the, the Colorfords. Are they here? Have, have I missed anything else? Those are the three main churches. Yeah, and we've been supporting a, an orphanage in, in Surapet in India, and there's, it's always been, been difficult with uh, raising funds for it, and it's been really placed on Roe's heart to raise money for that orphanage. So I really encourage you to come out next Saturday here from 10.30 to 12, uh, and to be raising money for that, that orphanage in Surapet that we really love and cherish. Two more. On May 2nd, you might be voting in your local election, and you also may be attending a church members meeting here. Uh, strangely, the, uh, we, we are a host for the election, so we're going to be boarding off these back doors, and you're going to have to enter in through those doors. 
But do come along if you're a church member. There'll be some things that we're discussing. It's actually going to be a special church members meeting as we're going to be discussing some things about the manse. And so when we talk about our property, we need to make a special church members meeting. Um, to give you some of the background for that, next Sunday we were hoping that there's going to be a, a minister coming to preach with a squint uh, and looking at coming here to be the, the, the following minister, but he is pulled out. And so there's no one on the horizon for the near future of there being a second minister, which I'm, I'm okay with. I'm not panicked. It's going to be good. But we thought, it was, was that not convincing? I'm not, everything's, everything's fine. No. <laughs> Everything is fine. God has it all in hand. We're going to be good. But I thought, and the trustees thought, or some of the trustees, we haven't met about it, that we could use the manse to, a little, uh, to our advantage while it's empty. And so we're going to be talking a little bit about that during the members' meeting. So that'll be a special church members' meeting. And the last thing that is going on, on the 5th and the 12th of May, which is Sunday evening, we're going to be doing something here, uh, a, an event which we're going to be exploring the Islamic faith. Uh, there, there's a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of talk on the media about Islam, and we found that as the Discipleship and uh, Missions Task Group spoke about it, thought that we are, a lot of us were rather ignorant about the Islamic faith, and we want to be more equipped so eventually we can share our faith with them more effectively. But this event is going to be looking at the history uh, and the development of Islam and its impact in Britain, and it's going to be run by, where did the slide go? Oh, what? Um, it's going to be run by a guy called Imitaz. Um, going to remember his name from the slide, but it's a it's a colleague of Lucy uh, Olaf and John who works for the London City Mission, and and he's going to he's the Islam director for the London City Mission, so he's going to help us understand a little bit more about that. So I encourage you to come out on the fifth and twelfth of May, uh, and and learn more about that. I think that is all the notices, so here endeth the notices. Right. Back to you. Thank you very much. I've noticed that we use the term call to worship more often at West Lear. Has anyone else noticed that? Yes. So I'm going to jargon bust. What does it mean? So it means that it helps us come and focus our thoughts on a Sunday morning. It helps us to focus on God. It helps us to think about and remember God's greatness, his kindness and power, his love and his blessings on us. It helps us to come together as a spiritual family, to worship together in the body of Christ by the power of his advocate, the Holy Spirit. And in the light of this understanding, let's ready our hearts and our minds with some words from the Bible. So Romans 3, 23 to 26, and I've chosen to use the International Children's Bible today because it's, it's really clear and easy to understand language. All people have sinned and are not good enough for God's glory. People are made right with God by his grace, which is a free gift. They are made right with God by being made free from sin through Jesus Christ. God sent him to die in our place to take away our sins. We receive forgiveness through faith. And all of this is because of the blood of Jesus' death. This showed that God always does what is right and fair. God was right in the past when he was patient and did not punish people for their sins. And God gave Jesus to show today that God does what is right. God did this so that he could judge rightly and also make right any person who has faith in Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. People are made right with God by his grace. This is a free gift for everybody. We come just as we are this morning. Some are tired. 
Some are energized. Some are happy while others grieve. Some skipped in. I saw some skipping. Some are sluggish with burdens. However you arrived this morning, can I encourage you to stand? And we're going to stand in God's presence. Perhaps hold out your hands to receive God's free gift as we say a prayer together. Let's stand. Come all who are thirsty, all who are weary and worried. Come all who are thirsty, all who are bleary and bored. Come all who are thirsty, those who know they are spiritually poor. Come all who are thirsty, those who are tired of spin. Come all who are thirsty, those who are parched for peace. Come, all who are thirsty, those who wrestle with themselves and their schemes. Come, all who are thirsty, those who wrestle with the world and its grand designs. Come, all who are thirsty, and you will find living water and sustaining food, eternal and free. Come and buy, no money needed, Come, all who are thirsty. Amen. Let's sing our praises to God. Come set the rule and reign In our hearts again Increase in us we pray Build your kingdom here, let the 
Lord, come set your rule and reign in our hearts today. Increase in us, we pray, Lord. Unveil what we're made. This morning, Lord, we just dedicate this morning to you in every element of the service. We lift our hands and say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done. God, your name be all the glory. And we just give ourselves over to this time of worship this morning. That we just lift our voices to heaven together as one church all together. All generations, every part, every facet of this church is lifting our hands up together to praise you this morning, Lord Jesus. And we say as one church, hallelujah, God, for hallelujah. what you've done for us. Thank you so much, Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sin against us, forgive them, and lead us not into temptation, but to live. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. 
and it was nearly as good as this one. This one was better. So that's so great, so great. What a way to open our worship. Thank you so much. I forgot to mention sermon notes. Over there, there are some clipboards. And uh, if you have trouble focusing on the drone that Jeff is, uh, you can... (laughs) There's a few things to keep you focused. Um... There's a sheet for having your own reflections on what you're learning about today. 
There's also a space for writing your own prayer, which we'll come to a little bit later. There's also sermon, word, bingo. It's not just for the kids. So that's one way of uh, listening out for the words in Jeff's, in Jeff's word a bit later. So um, keep you amused. Keep you focused. Please do come and get a clipboard and a pencil. Okay. Revelation. Jeff uh, was having a laugh when he gave it to the all-age team, didn't he? So, okay, who was here last week? Okay, I can't have just the minister. Um, can you remember what Danny and Jeff led us through last week? Test for you. Anyone brave enough to shout out? Don't be shy. Anyone remember? It was really good, Jeff said. A letter to the church in Ephesus. Yes, yes, great. Point to you, Roger, well done. Finding our first love, rediscovering our first love. And our first love is? Jesus is always the right answer, isn't it? Um, absolutely. And can you remember what she did with the rice? What was the point of the rice? Do you remember? What was that, Lorraine? Making space. So we have great things that we love doing. We love football. We love cooking. We love eating. We love reading. We love socializing. But if we put all those things into our lives first, where is the room for Jesus? So by taking all those things out first, by putting Jesus in first, we can put all those things in top, on top and around Jesus. He is our first love, and we need to make space for Jesus. Great. Brilliant. Ten points to everybody. I'll, I'll upgrade you from one point, Roger. I think that's brilliant. Okay, I'm glad people are paying attention. <laughs> okay, we're going to do something a little bit different. Is my service. Um, who brought their phones to church? Come on. This is not to catch you out. Great. That's great. Okay, brilliant. We're going to do an online live poll. So kids, you might not have phones yet. You might have been told to leave yours at home. That's okay. Crowd around an adult who will let you have access to their phone. We are going to go to, I find where it is. Is it on the screen? Brilliant. Menti.com. If you go to menti.com or you can scan the QR code as we start the quiz, what is going to happen is there's a series of things that I want to get your opinion on. And generally, it's, yes, love it, is one of the answers. No, thanks, not for me. Or, I'm indifferent, take it or leave it. Meh, whatever. Okay, so the answers are anonymous. You won't be identified. You can answer as honestly as you would like. No one is going to chastise you. Uh, if the QR code is on the screen, which it is, the tech team have been brilliant by embracing this and helping me facilitate this. You can scan the QR code, and you will get the first question of, what do you think of the spring season up on your screen? Hopefully, on your phones, you will have oh, five, six people. Are, this is brilliant. Well done. I love this. Well done for being on board with this. 14 people love, 16 people love the spring. Somebody hates spring. Love that. Well done. I love that it's anonymous, because we're not going to call you out of that. Not bothered. People aren't bothered by spring. Generally, people love it. OK, I love this. If you're online, I'm really hoping you can do as well. I love it. People are scanning the QR code. Okay, let's hang with this question for a bit, team, before we move on. I want as many people as possible to join in. Wow, this is awesome. Thank you for taking part. I love it. Really had sleepless night worrying about whether people were joining in this. Obviously, if you don't have a telephone, you can do a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or a sideways thumbs if you're not too bothered about people knowing your answer, um, or just do it mentally, that's fine. Okay, the spring season, lots of people love it, only three of you hate it. Oh, Paddy made a mistake, you can't correct it Paddy, sorry about that, you might, might need to take more time at your answer for the next question. And 11 people are not bothered, brilliant, oh we're still going, brilliant, 52 people, 54 people love the spring season, that's fantastic. Okay, so you get the general picture. Let's move on to the next question. Thanks, team. Oh, more people hate it there. School holidays. 
I mean, I love them. Who loves the school holidays? Yep. Not bothered. Now, this was really interesting in our house. We questioned whether people would be not bothered about the school holidays. You're not bothered. I love that. That is brilliant. People are not bothered. I suppose that's people who are out of the school system, not particularly bothered by it because um, actually holidays are more expensive. Retired, exactly. Great, I hope some kids are doing this. Ella, you doing it? Awesome. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so that's a bit more of a divider. School holidays, lots, look at that. Look at all the likes, love that. It's like a little bubble effect. Let's move on, next question. Pineapple on pizza, people. Whoop, whoop, oh, it's a big whoop, whoop from Joe. Oh, 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 what's happening there? Oh, I love that. Nope, no way. Who are the no wayers? Would you care to admit that? Okay, lots of backs. Okay, you really, I mean, I love it. I love it. I don't generally like hot fruit, but I love it on pizza. Look at that. That's amazing. 12 people not particularly bothered, 13 people. Look at that. That is really even. Who knew that that was such an even divider? Oh! Even Stevens. Okay, next question. I mean, I could spoon it out and eat it like that. Anyone else do that? I love Marmite. Basically, my mum would offer me sweets or ice cream or ham and Marmite, and I would go for ham and Marmite every time. I'm a love it. Weirdo, who called me a weirdo? Roger! I'm injured. I love it. Do you hate it then? Yeah, Roger hates it. Okay. Now, look at that. That's not as much of a divider. I mean, that's interesting. Love it, love it. Yes, uh, I will get paid from Marmite later. What? Oh, next one. Crocs and socks. It's Crocs and socks, thank you. <laughs> Joe, what do, what do you think about Crocs and socks? Yeah, 100%. Yes, definitely. No, maybe. No, I mean, you're in the minority there, Joe. How do you feel about that? You don't care about being in the minority. <laughs> I love that. Maybe, some people are questioning. Okay, next question, let's do that. It's a definite no from the majority of the congregation. Ooh, ooh, ooh. family, what do you think about that? Look at that. Yes, your highness. Oh my goodness, I really thought that people wouldn't, wouldn't be fussed about them. You're royalists, who knew? No, no, there's some, there's some shaking of heads there. No, there are some people who are not royalists. No way, no need, not fussed, but generally, yes, your highness. Okay, moving on, next question. Reading the Bible daily. Controversial. Essential. Never tried it, never tried it. Is that coming from Finn? Did I hear that from him? Oh, it was. Did you say, never tried it? You never tried it? Oh, okay, fine. Every now and then? Yeah, every now and again. That's a valid answer, isn't it? Essential, 46, 47. Interesting. Every now and then is quite high. And lots of people are liking it. Moving on, moving on. <laughs> Using grey for decorating. Who loves grey? <laughs> the winds are waving to each other. You love grey, don't you? Yeah, yeah, that's a definite. That's a love it. So over it. 13 people are so over it. Okay, here and there. So people are a little bit, mm, okay, here and there. Great. Next question. I mean, I, I quite like grey. There's grey in my house. Less grey now. A bit more colour. My mum loves colour. She'd have a rainbow house if she could, I'm sure. Singing worship songs, I mean, if they're like what we just opened with, right? 100%. If I'm in the mood, okay. Ooh, you need to be in the mood. Do you not, agree, do you not think that if you start singing, you get in the mood? Just putting it out there. 61, yes please. Four, no thanks. 14, if I'm in the mood, and lots of likes. Moving on. 
I love the hubbub. I hope some under twos are doing it. Okay, next, next question, please. Telling others about Jesus. Yes, essential. Look at that, shooting up there. That's for someone else. Well done, brave per people, people. That's for someone else. Can't, makes me cringe. I mean, that's, you need to admit that. That's good. I think that's good. Overwhelmingly, telling others about Jesus is, yes, it's essential. And it's really quite low for that's for someone else and can't, makes me cringe. Brilliant. Well, I think, is that number 10? Brilliant. That is my set of questions for you. Thank you for taking part in my online poll. How is that relevant to the Bible? Is there going to be a connection? Anyone want to make a guess? No. Very wise. Very wise. I tell you what, let's have a look at the Bible, shall we? Thank you for taking part. Put your phones away now. Make sure they're on silent. And don't get them out again unless you're using them for your Bible. How strict are we? Okay, Theo is going to come and read from the Bible. My challenge for you is to think about what the passage is saying to you. And how does this passage challenge you? Great, let's put this on for you, Theo. Thank you. So the reading is from Revelation 3, verses 14 to 22. To the church in Laodicea, write this to the angel of the church in Laodicea. The Amen, that's another name for Jesus, is the one who is faithful and true, is the one who is the faithful and true witness. He is the ruler of all that God has made. He says this to you, I know what you do. You are not hot or cold. I wish that you were hot or cold. But you are only warm, not hot, not cold. So I'm ready to spit you out of my mouth. You say you are rich. You think you have become wealthy and you do not need anything. But you do not know that you are really miserable, pitiful, poor, blind and naked. I advise you to buy gold from me. Gold made pure in fire. Then you can be truly rich. Buy from me clothes that are white. Then you can cover your shameful nakedness. Buy from me medicine to put on your eyes, then you can truly see. I correct and punish those who I, whom I love, so be eager to do it right. Change your hearts and lives. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with them, and he will eat with me. He who wins the victory will sit with me on the throne. It was the same with me. I won the victory and sat down with my father on his throne. Everyone who has, heard, who has ears should listen to what the Spirit says to the church. This is the word of the Lord. Great. Thank you, Theo. So, is there a connection? Can you see a connection from the poll to that passage? Nod or shake your head. Can you see a Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes, you can see a connection. So, basically, how many of you clicked, meh, can take it or leave it, not bothered, not for me, mm, you know, indifferent? How many of you? Just have a think about that. It's that option of not caring either way, not being hot, not being cold. I have no opinion. I'm okay with... No, not being extreme, not being one or the other. That was the challenge for the church in Laodicea. And this is the challenge for us. Something like Marmite, did we see that it divides people dramatically? Was it fairly even? Love it or hate it, that's the campaign. But how should we feel about Christ? Should we have a lukewarm opinion on Christ? in our lives. Jesus should fill us with passion and fire, but does Jesus have that effect on you? I'm going to invite Jeff up. Let's pray for him as he brings the word to us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this challenge. 
Help us to think about where we are hot, where we are cold, and where we are lukewarm. And I pray that the words that you have put in Jeff's heart, his mind, and his tongue are from you and go deep into our hearts and give us the challenge that we need. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, so we are kind of jumping back and forth in these seven letters, in the, the, the seven letters to, to the seven churches in the beginning chapters of Revelation. There is a reason to the madness, although I won't give you the reason. You'll just have to guess. But we started with the first one last week, and now we're in the last one this week, and then we'll do the, the other ones in a somewhat random order as well. But there is a a rhythm in all of the seven letters. Jesus first introduces himself, and then we learn something about the church, things that they're doing well and things that they're doing poorly. And then there's this challenge and a call to change or to remember something about who Jesus is and what God is calling us to. And in this letter to the church in Laodicea, Jesus reveals himself as the true and faithful witness. What this means is everything that Jesus sees, he judges correctly, as it should be judged. He sees things as they're supposed to be seen, where we see things as murky, not quite clearly. And often we don't see ourselves as clearly as he sees us. And then he's talked about as being the beginning of God's creation. In Paul's letter to the Colossians, the city of Colossae was really close to the city of Laodicea. And in that letter, Paul talks about how Jesus is the one who God sent out to create everything. He's the beginning of God's creation. He's the end of God's creation. Everything that Jesus created was made for him and by him that it might glorify him. Everything is about Jesus. And as a church, we want to be all about Jesus. And Jesus is the true and faithful witness. And in the question that that Katie asked about, do we think reading the Bible is essential daily? My strong urge as your pastor and your brother is yes. Because we want to go there that we might understand and know and love Jesus more. That's why we open up the Bible every day. That we might know and love Jesus because what he says is true and faithful to reality. And so that is who Jesus is as he's revealing himself to the church in Laodicea. And because Jesus is the true and faithful witness, because he is the beginning and the creator of all of God's creation, Jesus is to be trusted, Jesus is to be believed, and Jesus is to be obeyed. And what do we learn about the church in Laodicea? They're described as lukewarm. Now, my guess is, many of you who've read this, we read the idea of a church being lukewarm as a church being apathetic or a church being indifferent. And so Jesus would either like us to be all for Jesus or all against Jesus. That's fine, but being lukewarm, being on the fence is is not what Jesus wants. That's not really what's going on in in this passage. But how this church is, is Jesus is not very tolerant of this church. He'd rather vomit this church out, spit this church out of his mouth if it continues being like this. Those are some pretty harsh words. Now, we often talk about Jesus being really nice and kind, but here Jesus is not being tolerant of the church in Laodicea because they're not being the church that Jesus intends them to be. And now we have to be very careful because we we can say, okay, bad Laodicea and good Wesley Baptist Church. But Laodicea saw themselves as fine. We too will probably see ourselves as fine. But our judgment of the situation is not what we want to be reliant upon. We want to be reliant on what Jesus says. And this is why we open up the Bible all the time because we want to hear what Jesus has to say to you and I. So what was Laodicea like as a a city? Because I think what we find, as we learn more about the city, we'll learn more about the church. In AD 17, there was an earthquake in the city of Philadelphia. Not in America, but the original Philadelphia. And the the city there was entirely devastated by, by an earthquake. 
I think the, the Campbells, you guys were in an earthquake last week in, in the, the eastern states. Wasn't too bad. This earthquake devastated the city of Philadelphia, and they couldn't afford to rebuild themselves. And so the city of Rome sent them a lot of workers and money so that they could rebuild the city. Philadelphia was entirely reliant on the help from the capital city. Laodicea and Colossae also suffered an earthquake in AD 61. And Rome offered to send them the same things. We'll send them money, we'll send you workers, we'll rebuild your city. And Laodicea said, no, we got this. We're fine, we don't need any help from anyone else. Laodicea was quite an arrogant city. And they had some reasons to be arrogant. They were a very wealthy city. They were the banking center of that region. They had a medical school specialized in ophthalmology, so eyesight, which is kind of referenced in this passage. They had a really expensive wool trade. They were really, really wealthy. But there was one thing that the city didn't have. They didn't have good water. Or water, as as you guys say. Water. I really struggle with that one. It it should have a D in it, I think. But the water to the the north, there was this great hot spring to to the north of Laodicea with really beautiful hot springs and minerals, and people from all over the Roman Empire would travel to the area to enjoy the healing effects of the water. And, and then down, down to the south, about 11 miles near the city of Colossae, there was these beautiful cold water streams coming from the snow-capped mountain of Mount Cadus. And Colossae had one of the best drinking waters ever. I grew up on Vancouver Island, and right in the middle of where my town was surrounded was the Comox Valley Glacier, which is this beautiful glacier. And my water was glacier water. And then I came to South End. (laughs) And it gets caught up in all of your taps, and everything gets covered in lime scale. I judge you harshly. I spit you out of my mouth. All right. So so what was happening actually is the the warm waters in the hot springs, as they made their way down to Laodicea, it it cooled off, and the minerals in the water became really disgusting to drink. And then the cold water coming from the southeast in Colossae, as it came to to, uh, to Laodicea, the, the warm air and the hot sun of Turkey heated up this cold, refreshing water. When it came to Laodicea, it was lukewarm and no longer refreshing. And so you had this hot water and this cold water coming from the north and the south. And by the time it got here, it was disgusting. It was great down here, cold and refreshing down here, healing and warm up here. But by the time it got here, it was useless and gross. And so the people in the lady we see would spit out. They would vomit out the water because the water, which was once good for something, was now no longer good for anything. And that's what's happening in the church of Laodicea. It had this great start. But it had now become useless for what its purpose was. And they're really arrogant. They didn't realize about themselves. They thought, we're rich. We got all this money. We got all these giftings. We got all the skills in the church. We're doing okay. And they thought they were judging themselves correctly. And Jesus says to them, I can't tolerate the way that you're behaving. I can't tolerate that you're so self-reliant that you think you have no room for me in your life. You're not dependent upon me. You're dependent upon yourselves. And because of that, there's nothing that's going to happen through you. I'm going to spit you out because you become a useless church. And Jesus, the true and faithful witness, looks at them in their arrogance and says, rather than being great, you're wretched, you're pitiful, You're naked and you're blind. So we need to sort you out. Now you might think that these are really harsh words, and they are harsh words. But Jesus says to them in verse 19, look, I'm rebuking you, I'm challenging you, I'm disciplining you because I love you. Children, do your parents ever tell you off? (laughs) Are any of you indignant about being told off? Do you know why your parents tell you off? Because they love you. Because they love you. Because the way that you're acting is ridiculous. And you need to sort your lives out. And you need to listen to your parents. Now, parents, we get it wrong sometimes. We, we do. But the reason why we discipline you, there's other children out here. I don't discipline any of you. I discipline you guys. Because I love you. And I'm called to, to, to lead and guide you. And, 
And you other parents, I don't judge you for your parenting. But your job is to, to love and discipline them. And I know you do. And you tell them off, not because you hate them, not because you want bad things for them, but because you love them. And Jesus is disciplining the church in Laodicea because he loves them. He's giving them those harsh rebukes because he loves them. He knows what he wants them to be. He knows the way that he wants them to walk in. And they're not doing it. And he says, won't you listen to my voice and obey me? Not because I hate you, but because I love you. Jesus wants all of us as a church to be humble and reliant upon him. And when we're not, we will be rebuked and challenged by Jesus. And Jesus says to them, come and buy from me. Although you're poor, although you don't have any money, although you think you're rich, although you think you have everything, come, you're poor, but buy this best stuff. Because that's how the kingdom of God works. We buy everything from God with money that we don't have. We are entirely dependent upon his grace. But then we have this this passage that's really well known. Jesus says, I stand at the door and I'm knocking on the door. And if anyone hears my voice and opens up the door to me, I'll go in and I'll eat with you. Now, many of us, we've heard this passage and we think this is about inviting Jesus into our hearts. Now, it's beautiful. In some ways, that's right. But again, like the lukewarm, that's not what's going on in this passage. Jesus is referencing a a passage in an Old Testament book called the Song of Solomon. And the Song of Solomon is is this love story between a a kingly groom and this bride who he deeply loves. And it's the love story about how they meet. And in one of those stories is the groom goes to his bride's house and he's knocking on the door It's late at night. He's knocking on the door. And and the bride's like, I'm a little bit tired. I've gotten into my pajamas. I've I've cleaned my feet. I don't want to walk through the house. I'm not really sure I'm going to open the door. And and then, but the groom's still knocking at the door. And and she's like, ah, I'm not sure if I should go. And eventually she thinks, okay, I'll go. But by the time she gets to the door, the groom is gone. She missed her chance. Jesus echoes this story in one of the parables he tells. He says, this bridegroom arrives, master arrives at the door, and the, these ten women are, are supposed to be there to wait for him, to, to celebrate his arrival. But five of them, they've been doing it, they've been waiting, they had their oil in their lamps all ready to go, because they were ready even if he comes at night. But the other five were sleeping. And when the, when the, the groom arrives... The five go with him and enjoy, enjoy the party, but the other five are outside. They miss their chance. And what Jesus is saying to the church in Laodicea, look, I'm standing at the door. I'm knocking. I'm telling you to, to open up and change the way that you are, but time is limited. Respond when you hear the knocking. And so if, if God is telling us today as Wesley Baptist Church that we are neither cold nor hot We're not doing what he's supposed to be doing. We need to repent today. Not put it off to when we want it. And maybe God is calling you specifically. And you have become neither cold nor hot. But useless in the kingdom of God because you're disobeying the voice of Jesus. You're doing your own thing. You're self-reliant. Jesus is saying today is the day to repent and change how you're walking. This is the amazing grace of God, that Jesus looks at us in our pitiful, wretched, blind and naked state and says, I love you. I love you. Come back to me. I love you. This is amazing grace. I'm going to invite the music group up. If you guys could come up, this is kind of drawing to an end. The whole Christian life is us remembering our relation to God. We are always going to be reliant on him and not on ourselves. This is amazing grace. We remind ourselves continually we are not, we don't live this Christian life on our own strength and our own ability and our own arrogance, but daily humbling ourselves before God and say, I'm open however you want to use me. I once was blind, but now I see. We're going to sing Amazing Grace, which I I think when John Newton wrote this, he was probably reflecting a little bit on this passage as well. 
As a church, we want to be entirely dependent on the grace of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's, let's stand together and sing.
We're going to start a time of prayer. You are welcome to stay standing. You may sit if you find that easier. But it's a massive challenge for us to be hot or be cold and not be lukewarm. So this time of prayer is just for you and God, for you to be challenged by the Bible and for for you to bring your words to God. And when we pray, we're just talking to God. There's nothing mysterious about it. We can say it out loud. We can say it in our heads. Some can speak in tongues, which is an amazing gift from God. But this time is going to be for you. And if you want to say it in front of everybody, then the mic will be on and you can come up here or if you're not quite brave enough and you want to put your hands up because you want to share a prayer then I can bring the mic or someone can bring a mic to you but as we continue in this focus to be challenged by God let's talk to him and ask him to come out of that stage of being lukewarm So let's pray. Father, stir us. Father, challenge us. Holy Spirit, help us to be hot, passionate for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Help us to respond to you, Lord. We don't want to keep you waiting. We don't want to delay. Like Jeff said to us, when the bridegroom came and the bride delayed, By the time the bride responded, the bridegroom was gone. Lord, even today we just pray, Lord God, help our hearts to respond to you. Where we have given our lives to you, and decided to make you Lord. 
Help us to follow up on that commitment, Lord. Let zeal for your house, let passion for you blaze within our hearts, Lord. Pour your spirit upon us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Set us ablaze for you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. God, I hope. Thank you for saving our homeless people. Just give them steps by steps, food, help, home. Amen. Father, I pray that those of us who have hearts like dark, hard winter soil will know your refreshing spring rain of the Holy Spirit coming in, loosening that earth, nourishing that earth. And in that earth, Lord, I pray that there will be signs of spring that fresh green shoots will appear. And as those shoots are nurtured by you, by your warmth of your love, by your care, I pray that they will blossom and bloom. And I pray that as your children, we will blossom and bloom and give you great joy May we be your children who gives you and constantly give you great joy because we love you so much and because our hearts belong to you. Take us on, Lord, in our weakness and may we grow ever closer to our wonderful Lord Jesus. Amen. It's actually a song that comes to mind. So um, if you didn't know, it's an old one. So uh, help, help me out. <laughs> this is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship. Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, we are sorry for the times when we are indifferent. We acknowledge that you love us unconditionally, all the time, everywhere. Help us to learn from your example. Help us to know what it is to love with all our being, to journey with you with all our heart, to say we are all in. Help us to understand what the cost is. Help us to rejoice in all the abundance that you bring. Father, we thank you that you love us. We thank you that you accept us wherever we are on our journey, whether we don't know you yet, whether we've journeyed for many, many years, whether we've gone off the boil, or whether we're on fire and so hot no one can touch us. Father, I pray that you stir us, that your word challenges us in our everyday lives, and that we are challenged to read your word, to take it into our work, our school, our home, our holidays, so that every day we can feed off your truth. Thank you for your free gift of love, your free gift of grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together to sing our final song. Living in us, you are the rock in who we trust. You are the light shining for all the world to see. You rose from the dead, conquering fear, our Prince of Peace. Drawing us near, Jesus, our hope, living for the world we see.
to receive prayer. If that's you, then there's going to be an area. If um, parents and kids, you can just give some space to that area over there, then people can go and pray and have some, a little bit of uh, privacy and some time to share and pray together. It's been a pleasure to worship here with you this morning. Thank you so much for being part of our service. I'm going to finish with a passage from the Bible in Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 to 9. Paul writes this, finally, my friends, Keep your minds on whatever is true, pure, right, holy, friendly, and proper. Don't ever stop thinking about what is truly worthwhile and worthy of praise. And God gives, who gives you peace will be with you. Amen. Thanks for coming. There's tea and coffee.